Hey, Spence. Uh, yeah, Shane. Uh, have you played any of the Fallout video games? Um, like 15 minutes of Fallout 4. I think that makes me an expert, right? Uh, de- de- definitely not. Oh. Definitely not. Well, okay. Well, have you seen the Fallout television show? I have not. No. I already knew everything about Fallout from my 15-minute experience. Okie dokie. about the fallout show and we might touch a little bit of the games actually you know what let's start there um so you've played about 15 minutes of fallout 4 do you know anything else about the no i essentially uh, very because we rented it from a red box which is an old-fashioned sentence and that is the i the wildest idea of playing a game like fallout is going to well, get from Redbox. No, the reason I did it is because I was like, I don't know if I want to buy this, so I rented it to play oh. for a little bit, and then if I liked it, I would buy it. That makes sense. Because okay. um, that game is like huge. Yeah, yeah. The it idea was, of finishing that in 48. No, it was solely, <laughs> solely to like play the first couple hours, Just and it. then I played a little bit and was like, meh, because I was not, yeah. I, you know, I was didn't have time to play video games all that much, and it felt like a job, so. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I did not continue it, but that was Fallout 4. That was shortly after like everybody was playing that game. Yeah. Um, and I saw all the footage of like the weird crank guns and stuff, and I was like, "That's cool." Um. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't think I've played a single solitary minute of any of the Fallout games, and yet I know quite a bit about the mm-hmm. Fallout universe, especially now because, like, I mean, bef- before the Fallout show came out, I, I had, I was very, aw- I'm very con- uh, uh, aware of the video game industry. I uh, I was aware of kind of the overall idea of what Fallout was and like some of the factions and that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Like I I know I know enough to be dangerous. Um, <laughs> and then um, I uh, you know when the show came out or you know when they they started announcing the shows and stuff, I was like, you know what, like. I just couldn't care less about this show yeah. before it came out. Like that was the funny thing is like I was like interested in the Fallout universe, but I'd never really played any. And like I, I, you know, I, I followed the like kind of Fallout seventy six debacle very closely because I thought it was hilarious and fascinating. Um, but yeah, when they announced this show, and I saw some of the like a little bit of clips here and there, and like the poster and stuff, I was like, there is no way that's gonna be good. I just I don't know why I just yeah. knew it wasn't gonna be good, but I really didn't think it was gonna be good. Yeah, I I kind of I didn't write it off. I just kind of went, "Meh, okay." It it felt like it was going to be just this like rushed into production. The Last of Us did really well. Yeah. We need to oh, follow yes. that like post-apocalyptic game adaptation. Yes. It felt to me like that's what they were doing. Right. 100%. I completely agree. And then like it came out and yeah. everybody liked it. Yeah. I Like, I, again, like, I'm very connected. I, I follow the uh, video game industry very closely. And so I saw, like, a bunch of video game pe- people being like, no, it's actually, like, really good. Yeah. I was just like, wait, is it actually good? Oh, my God. Did they make Fallout good, guys? Yeah, yeah. Which, like, in fairness, Jonathan Nolan was doing it. And he yeah. co-wrote The Dark Knight. Like, yeah. I, clearly, he's a very talented dude. But at like, the same time, he also did make Westworld season three. So, no. or season four. Which one was like? Oh no, season two is like the bad one. See, well, I really don't like season three. You? Oh, really? I really don't like any of Westworld all that much. Yeah, I, I like parts of season one. Okay, the first then- episode is uh, literally the best. Like hour. Of that television yeah. series and one of the best hours of television, if you it's a, ask me. It's an incredible pilot. Like it's it is very so good. good. And then it only kind of goes downhill. It, it, yeah, Westworld falls into that like timey wimey thing for yeah. no reason in a kind of cool way at times in the first season, like in, in a way that works in the first, first season. season, I think is good. Like overall, I think the first season is good season two. It's like, let's just do it all again. And, and like I, all I, of the worst parts about season one, they just, I, I wish down season on. three was just about, it had nothing to do with Westworld and was just a sci-fi show about a criminal, like a criminal app for hire guy. And it was about. Aaron Paul's character like which is sick like like, that's that's all I wanted like that episode is like maybe not the best episode of TV ever but like if you were building that as the show right if that was a pilot get Marshawn Lynch back like get Marshawn Lynch back (laughs) I'm so serious I love him in that yeah yeah Um, but uh, yeah like I I, Westworld was not 
my cup of tea. I, I yeah, but anyway, anyway. I, I literally watched a couple episodes of season four and stopped. Like, yeah, and then it got canceled. And, yeah, but holy shit! And then they made Fallout, which I mean that that, that was legit part of it for me. I was like, ah, oh, it's Jonathan Nolan, like. Jonathan a, Nolan doing a, another like semi Western like sci fi like thing. Western sci fi property. Yeah. Um, like IP property. It's like, whew, this could go bad. Yeah. And it went real good. It went real good. It no, went it, real good. I, I like Fallout I, so much more than I thought I would. Like Same. you were raving about it, and I was like, oh, it's probably gonna be like enjoyable, but I don't know if it'll be like my cup of tea. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, there was never like an episode that I was like, okay, can we get to the end of this? Like, yeah. They have like, a, a good way of keeping each one interesting in one way or another. There's kind of like one big issue for me. And then the rest of it I'm fucking here for basically. Interesting. I, I have a couple of like small things. I have that like, like a couple like tiny things. Throughout the season kind of wore on me a little bit, but yeah. in ways that I still think is really fun. Like, Do we want to start out with the negative and then yeah, move our uh, way into positive? Because well, I have a whole fucking yeah, bucket what, list of positive. What's your like big one? Because I'm curious if it'll be similar Man, to mine. It, uh, the thing that frustrated me for a really long time is how unlikable Maximus is for so much of the season. Yeah. It's like they started off on us being like, oh, well, he fucking maimed his like best friend. Friend, yeah, and then he kills. Which don't get me wrong, killing uh fucking Titus, Titus. But I'm trying to think of the actor's name because that dude fucking sucks. Um, like killing him, all here for. But he's just like really unlikable for a lot of the mm-hmm. season for me. Um, where it's like like part like I it, and now he grew on me. Like he got to a point where I did actually like. By the time he's like chilling in the vault yeah, and he's yeah, in yeah. The fluffy <laughs> shoes and the. All right, and then I was like, okay, this guy, this is good shit. But it's like he's really unlikable for a lot of the season in a way that's like frustrating for me. Yeah. I'm just like, I really want to root for this guy, but I also don't because he sucks a little bit or a yeah, lot. Yeah, my that's kind of my big thing for the for the season for me. Well, see, and the whole time, like, uh, spoiler alert for this, they make you like believe right that he is the guy that maimed his friend. Yeah, I kind of saw that he didn't. Like, I yeah. don't know who did. I thought it was going to be a third act twist that, like, somebody else did and they found them. But, and I, I kind of was like, I saw through that. Or it was fucking uh, Johnny Pemberton. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> That's his actual name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Which, okay, what, wild guess. How old do you think that man is? No idea. Uh, it, it, give me a, any number. His friend? The, yeah, or, no, no, the, the white guy. The, the, the leader the, white dude? The, no, the, 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 um, uh, 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 the, the, the guy who gets dropped in as his squire. Um, that like uh oh him uh 30 42 that man is so much older than he baby than he looks baby face baby, baby voice. face as as hell he's really good in the show he's hilarious too i really yeah. like johnny he's Cumberton. uh he's quite good in it um yeah i i i agree with you I, but i also think that it kind of ties into my main issue where mm. it's like I don't like any single character's story arc beginning to end except for the ghoul. Mm, like fascinating. there were moments in uh, for every other like subplot or sub character that I was a little bit like, can we go to the other thing? Like, I, yeah, okay. I can't even give you like a specifics. You Ooh, know what I mean? Like, okay. like it was just like, I, I really was engaged with everyone at certain points in the season. Mm. And then at other like episodes, I just be like this, your story arc, this episode is just not as good. Go back to the ghoul. <laughs> okay. Uh, thoughts on um, on her on on her brother. I can't remember his name. I see. I really enjoyed his stuff. I really liked all of his stuff, like the uh, the espionage I, into I really uh, like thirty two and thirty one. I, I really like that shit. And see, his was early on that I was not as into. Yeah. Okay. Where I was like, okay. And then as soon as they kind of go into the vault and see the horrors, yeah. um, that was when I was like, oh, okay. And then when they go back and there's that whole extended sequence where they're like, they've cleaned it up and he's seeing like still the, yeah. that shit. Good I was like, shit. that's when I locked in, but that's like late in the season. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, yeah. It, I mean, it was like by the time, I think it's in the first episode where he like goes into 32 and he sees the blight and stuff. Yeah. And I was like. I can't wait for him to find out all these secrets. Yeah. Like, see, I I thought that was interesting, but then I I don't know. I don't know what it was, but like Maximus, I kind of didn't hook into until he was like, really the scene that like warmed me to him was when he was like, you should brand me. I'm your squire. He's like, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like that scene's funny. And like, I do get everything they're doing with him, but I'm never quite as like his opening. I'm really engaged. And then as soon as he gets the armor, I'm a little bit like back and forth. Where I don't know until late in the season when I get back. Um, oh, what's her name? 
Uh, Lucy, what's the actor's name? Uh, Ella, Ella uh, Pernell. Pernell. Thank you. Yeah. Um, she, I'm a. I watch Yellow Jackets. I'm a Yellow Jackets fan. I fucking hate her character in Yellow Jackets. <laughs> She's really good, but yeah. I hate her character in Yellow Jackets. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought she was really, and I always liked her as a character. But there was yeah. like one or two times where I was like, this episode's dragging a little bit, and it's just her being like used as bait or something. Yeah. Where it's like I'm not like character wise, it's just not it's, as engaging. It's like kind of specifically when she's when the ghoul is like yeah uh, pulling her around or like you know what he like yeah like uses her as bait yeah. for the big fish. It's thing. like the payoffs throughout that yeah. are really good, yeah. but like I'm just never quite as engaged with her. I'm yeah. never quite empathizing with her in the way that I think they want me to. I get that. Um, but it, 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 at the end of the story, it does do a lot for her character and I, yeah. I fully understand why we spent the time. But like I said, just, uh, that's what kind of my bigger issue is like, there are times where I kind of fall in and out of a lot of these characters. I get that. Um, but I never dislike any of it. It's yeah. just, it is the, it, which is, um, and it falls into the stranger things is a great example of this. Like episode to yeah. episode, I'm way more engaged with different characters than I, at any given time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there are some times episode where it's like, eight is, of season two. Well, exactly. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the problem. Here's the problem. I would have loved a full ghoul episode where it's oh, just on him. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, a hundred percent. Because I think shit. his is so sprawling and yeah. interesting. I yeah. I mean, he's got the longest history. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like he has been not only a you know around for that two hundred years. So has you know Hank and and, yeah. and several of the other characters. Like no, he's been alive for two hundred yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. That dude's got a lot going on. Yeah. Um, he, I think his, like, and I would love that. I would love seeing how he got turned into a ghoul. Yes. Exactly. I would love to see, cause I thought ghouls were just something that happened. Like, it's just something that like naturally occurred. And I'm sure it is. And maybe you yeah. know that the world, but then like the squire dude takes the thing and he, he gets turned into a ghoul. Oh, my other question about ghouls that I just jump in here. Do they like start turning into that or are those naturally occurring injuries that just build up? Um, I actually don't know because I had the thought of like whenever he gets turned into a ghoul, his like ne- the arrow through the neck, which is such a funny gag, yeah. such a good bit with yeah. Fred Armisen. The great gag, yeah, great gag, yeah. Oh, I, we heard the the radio station, and I was like, man, that sounds like Fred Armisen. Yeah, and Meg was like, eh. and no I was way. like, eh, I it just sounds like Fred Armisen to me. And she's like, eh. and then fucking Fred Armisen yeah. shows up, and yeah. I was like, fucking told you, yeah, um, fantastic, but like. That gag, like, but when his neck healed, he had like the tiniest trace of a scar, and I was like, "Oh, are yeah. the ghouls like they like their noses get blown off and yeah. the nose won't heal back, but everything else?" It's like, yeah. I was like, "That's cool conceptually." Where yeah. it's like, "This is how fucked up he's gotten over the two hundred years." Yeah, uh, but I well, whatever anyway. But yeah, I, I I don't know, I don't know that that's kind of my other that's like my bigger issue. And my other issue is some of the like reveals don't work as well for me. Mm, fascinating. Like which ones? Specifically when they're walking and they're about to get to the bridge where he gets shot with the tooth, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's the gag where he's kind of like, not gag, sorry. It's the reveal where he's like, the bombs dropped when I was a kid. And she's like, okay. And for a lot, like eventually it becomes clear, but for a lot of it, you're like, well, wait, so has she been in just a, like, is she just yeah. underground even before society fell? Has it not been 200 years? Yeah. Where it's like that reveal and how long they hold on that. I was just like, I, I got, I got, I tripped myself up with the timeline mm. where I was like, so it hasn't been 200 years, but wait, the ghoul has clearly been around for so, like, they've talked about the yeah. ghoul being around. It's like, so that reveal, I think, was handled a little muddily. I wish they had held on to that until yeah. closer to the other reveals. Because the way they play it, they play it so nonchalant, and then they move on, and it's like I feel like that reveal for her would be crazy. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like he's going, no, no, no. I was in a fridge when the bomb went off. You know what I mean? I feel like that would be a bigger, especially his reaction to he did the thing. My fault. You know what I mean? And we know that that is like the case. We've seen the flashback of him coming out of the. You know what I mean? So it's not like he just thinks that it was the case yes. no no we know as an audience member he's telling the truth yeah, versus this other thing like and this isn't even a reveal but it's like a foreshadowing thing that i didn't even but the best foreshadowing is when you get to the thing you're like oh my god i should have known right this has a great one where she's like until i was like six i thought the projection was the yeah. real sun and then you find out she lived for a while under yeah. the real sun and that's why she felt good that shit. really good shit man like yeah. that's, that's one of those things where it's like, they never tell you that, but like yeah. as soon as she, as soon as we get that reveal at the end, I was like, oh fuck, this is so tragic. The other thing that like, the other one of those that really worked for me, it's like, they mentioned offhand, they were like quarantined for a little while and like there was like some sort of blight or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then that's when her mother died mm-hmm. was in that. And it's like, oh wait, 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 wait. 
they quarantined them so they could leave and go get her back. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and so nobody would know. Like, yeah. that's good shit. That's like good, like little subtle little yeah, storytelling no, things in the background. It does a lot of that yeah. really well. Uh, like other issues. My only other big one is some of the action staging does not work for me. Mm. And I'm specifically yeah. at a point when when Ben Linus, <laughs> uh, when the doctor leaves with the dog and the thing. Oh yeah, and the minigun pops up. And then he starts running and the bullets are hitting everywhere. I was like, you could have staged that differently. Like you could have put some kind of wall in front. So uh, it's hitting the wall and he's like bullets are whizzing through. And I've seen a clip of that being like, I really thought this was stupid as hell. And then I play and then I played the game. And there's an, a moment like that in the game that happens just like that. Where somebody's like shooting a minigun at you and you don't get hit once. Okay. So it's like, I think either it is a... A, a, I don't think that's like a story thing in the game. Yeah. I think it's like they are playing and the NPC is missing every shot. Yeah. Not, but, but the, either it's them trying to reference the video game where that does happen from time to time, or it is just kind of a silly, bad, but it thing. just doesn't work for me. No, I agree. I, mean? I, like, I, I think that without that very specific knowledge, it was yeah. just like, it was like this moment where it's like, Oh, this could have been like a really, you put the camera closer, you have obstructions in yeah. front and he's trying to like, but instead, it's just like a wall behind him and bullets are hitting everywhere but him and the way they do the effects of the bullets that are right over him. Yeah. And I'm like, this dude would be Swiss cheese right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, like even if he just got like scratched up one or two times, you know what I mean? Like maybe not even like... Like a nick, just like I'll yeah. cut on his forehead. Right? I, it cut was on the arm, cut on the leg. Stuff like that where I was just like, that did not work for me. Like, I agree. Some I of the action yeah. staging, that felt like they just needed to film that quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause it, it doesn't serve that much purpose. It's just to add a little tension to his escape. Yeah. Um, but I, whatever I digress. It's like, that was not something that like pulled me up, but there's like one or two of those throughout where I was like, the action that. isn't quite working. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times they're dealing with dudes in big power suits. It's like, it's hard to do the power leveling. In, yeah. It's like, it's, like it's, it can be kind of weird from time to time. Yeah. Which I, uh, that, other than that, like I don't really have any negatives. I, I like I said, I there's never there was never an episode I was just like checked out on. Like yeah. they they find something good and interesting throughout every episode for every character in yeah. one way or another. Mm, for sure, even if it's just like fun little moments versus like I, I'm not really connected, but yeah. I I do think you're a fun character. Yeah. It's like I don't know. Uh, Fallout's just a good, good, fun time. I, I like the world a lot. The other two little nitpicky things that drove me crazy every time they happened was uh, the really bad de-aging. The really bad de-aging. Yeah. yeah. Um, when he first walked in, I was like, oh, that's not bad. And as soon as they kept cutting back, I was like, oh, it's not great. It's, when he it's, keeps, it's like, if it, why, it's the lips, dude. It's, it's the, the lips. lips. Why can't they just learn? Just let them. It, it's, it's like we, me and Megan just rewatched uh, Rogue One. And it was like. Man, that effect of Grand Moff Tarkin sells so well when he's looking out the window at the Death Star. It's like if they just would have kept it at that. Yeah. And then like every other time we hear him or see him, it's through a, uh, a we see him from behind or we see him obstructed in some way or he's through a, um, you know, like the uh, hologram. Yeah, yeah. Any of those. But every, the minute he turns and he starts talking, it's like, oh, well, now it looks cheesy as hell. Yeah. Um, it's like, and I feel the exact same way about this. It's like, if you would just let me see him and then like we can hear him talk, like we could be on Walton Goggins the entire time seeing his reaction to the thing. And maybe you can, we can even still hear Hank talking. Yeah. But like the minute we see him, like his mouth move like plastic Play Doh. Yeah. And dude, the, one of the funniest things about that, in, it, it, um, Corridor crew, I've talked about them yeah, a little yeah. bit. VFX, they talk about a lot of those de-agings. And the good ones, you know what the real seller of it is? What? We don't have a muscle right here that lifts our lips directly up. It's muscles over here. Yeah. And so when you watch them really closely, bad ones, their lip goes up right in the center. It's like, well, there's no muscle. And I understand that's such a dumb thing. No, it's but not But you've dumb at looked all. at people's mouths talking your entire life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell immediately when something isn't quite right. The thing that makes humans human is our pattern recognition. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's how speech works. That how, that's how literally all of humanity works in a lot of ways, is pattern recognition. And then repeating those patterns back. Um, and so we're really good at recognizing the patterns of how a mouth moves. Yeah. And so... Uh, seeing it wrong, you instantly can tell. And yeah, it's like yeah, it's it's that uncanny valley thing of like, it looks good until they start like really moving. Like, yeah, why couldn't you just? Anyway, it's but so that and then the other small thing is man, those commercial breaks. Like yeah. I I have Amazon without 
ads. But man, every time it like cuts out of a scene and mm-hmm. cuts com- complete black and complete silence, I was like, oh, there's a commercial break. And you know the funniest part about that? What? They put all the commercials at the beginning anyway. Are you serious? Yep. If it, if it is an Amazon original thing or a movie, I believe, because movies, they're pretty good about it. They just put, oh, thanks to this um, sponsor, this episode is airing ad-free after this message. And they play like a 30-second to one-minute commercial at the beginning, and then the episode just plays. That's how I have it. Yeah, that's how I've watched it. I, and then there's no commercials throughout. Then why do they do that? My only thought on that is is because Percy Jackson did it and the reason Percy Jackson did it is they'll air episodes on ABC to oh, try to get people to pull over. Maybe it's on like Freebie or one of those. Maybe like, it's on something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Or for, and I can't explain why they would choose to do this, but maybe it's a fucking creative decision. Like, which like, don't like get me wrong. Every like, eight minutes and, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, no, it, no, no, it, no. they are ad breaks. You know what I Trust mean? Trust me, like, I agree with you. I cannot fathom why Amazon would put their thing on any kind of cable or anything. And Amazon's usually really good, uh, usually really good about putting stuff on physical. Yeah. At least they have been before. Yeah, that's very true. And so it's like, the, the, the Blu-ray's just going to have that built into the, because sh- when you do that, you do that in the writing. The yeah. writing is designed around, because you have to end oh. a moment on a thing. It's like and old. It, and it feels it. Yeah. You feel that every single it's time. It's like, dude, like Breaking Bad, um, uh, Lessons from a Screenplay did that Breaking Bad pilot episode where they yeah. break down like the commercial breaks and how each one ends and stuff. Yeah, it's like when you utilize it right, it's like a really interesting creative. Oh, dude, it's fantastic. I need to watch that Great one. video. It's a good one. Um, I'll make sure it's them. I could be wrong, but I believe it's them because I remember them. I would, I would doubt very seriously. Anyway, Lessons from, a Lessons from a Screenplay is fantastic. Yeah. Um, their podcast Beyond the Screenplay is also really, really I miss good. their YouTube, man. They're I miss their YouTube. I, I think Do they, they still post on no. Nebula or anything? Oh, I haven't checked Nebula. I don't think so, though. Yeah. They they may do Patreon videos from time to time, mm. but I think they just like the long form ones. Yeah. But the long form ones feel like le- a little less succinct, so it's it's just a different thing. Yeah. Um, I do miss their YouTube. Anyway, yeah, that it's that that's like for a long time became a creative thing to do because yeah. you had to find a way to keep people for the commercial break. Yeah. And it's weird to watch a show now that does it because I pointed that out to my brother watching Percy Jackson because he didn't notice. Yeah. I was like. Dude, why do they cut to commercial break? And he's like, what are you talking about? It's like, I was like, every like fifth every 15 to 8 to whatever it is, yeah. minutes, it'll just drop to black and then come back up like a scene later. You know? Yeah. And then I walk downstairs the next day and he's watching it and he's like, I can't unsee it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, dog, I'm telling you. Like it's like the it's the the music cuts out so hard and the black yeah. is up for so long. Yeah. So it's like it it's it's only an ad. It, it, if it was just like a quick cut out, cut in and out, yeah. like 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 it if it felt more natural, yes, it yeah. wouldn't bother me. It's just the fact that it's like so long and so consistent and the sound is so hard cut. Two episodes in a row, I have my dinger on, stupid alarms. You, you I dinger. I know. Um, on to the good shit. Yeah, I have no, a very like, long list of no, good shit. About, yeah, uh, the, the fucking music rules. I think is like one thing that really sticks out to yep, me. Yep, yep, Especially the ghouls motif. Like, you, oh, oh, okay, so we're talking score or are you talking needle drops? Uh, those, I, uh, those are... Good in uh, both. In, in uh, different t- ways. Talk both. I really like both, but like specifically, let's talk score first. I l- I fucking love the ghouls. Yeah. Like it's like it's like a distorted. <laughs> yeah, it's like a distorted version yeah. of like a really old westy kind of score. It's awesome. So, it's so good. I also really love the Brotherhood theme. That- yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Good shit. So good. Good. Oh shit. man. Yeah, and then also the needle drops are phenomenal. Yeah. Like every freaking needle drop. Yeah. And that's like very very borrowed from the game. Like the game yeah. has like its own like radio or and, whatever. But and it's all like forties. And I was going to say, 40s, 50s. that's the thing is they, they do that like retro futuristic thing yeah. so well that it's like, it puts you in the world of it yeah. really, really well in a way that I don't think many people with their needle drops think about, but it's, it's, it's fantastic. so funny. Like, uh, watchmen also use the, I don't want to yeah, set yeah, yeah. the world on fire. Yeah. And now this one did it too. It's yeah. like, man, every show that uses it is destined for glory. Yeah. Oh, if you all don't like Watchmen. Oh, go watch Watchmen. There's, there's Watchmen. people that don't like Watchmen. That is the, they are the wrongest people on the planet. And um, I can't imagine people more stupid. I, I like the, <laughs> There's one part of Watchmen I can be like, okay, I get that. I get why this isn't your thing. It's definitely my thing, but I can get why it's not your okay, thing. Okay, if you haven't watched Watchmen, uh, look uh, away for skip a second. Yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. 
Um, uh, Ozymandias. Uh, a lot. A lot of people don't love the characterization of Ozymandias. Ethan being one oh. of them, and his reasons are very sound. He's like, it just doesn't feel anything like the trajectory that character went mm, on. Okay. From the very get, even in the most like flashy flashbacks. Uh, um, that's the one part. And look, for me, completely works. Okay. But I do. I, that is the one thing I can concede that it's like I do understand why that would be a frustrating thing. Okay. That I can understand. I'll I'll think about that more. I'll rewatch it and maybe reread it. It's and, like and, yeah. I, I've, I've been wanting that. to rewatch it. I, oh, dude, Watchmen rules. Oh, Watchmen so rules. Good. If you haven't watched Watchmen, um, watch it. Watch, watch Watchmen. Watch Watchmen. Um, Who's watching the Watchmen? The beginning of the first episode. That opening. Holy shit. Uh, yeah it like yep. it sets up the universe like perfectly like we see the you know the glimpses of um oh shit what's the robot called um i can't remember but i the, can't remember the robot we, yeah we see the we see the 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 50s futurism um and then uh you know we get an introduction to walton goggins character yep. and like and and the the tension the pre-war tensions and yep. then the like the, full blown like oh man like the news reporters like, yes. the weatherman's like why am I talking about like yeah. all that shit is so good so good it it is a great first like ten minutes the freaking the thumbs up yeah oh so good yeah is it your thumb or mine such a good line yeah holy shit and then yeah the the bomb going off and yeah then, like yeah like when he's riding uh down the mountain with like it, uh, with the multiple bombs yeah, going off in the, the background him and his daughter it's like it's so good well and then at the end i just thought his daughter died but yeah. at the end he's like where's my family yeah. and it you're like, where's oh. my fucking fam oh no so yeah. he got out of that yeah and then lost her still and then yeah. went back into the waste oh good shit good, good shit, shit man Good shit. He man. is like far and away the best part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it, and I don't even mean that to disparage anybody else. I just mean like they know that he is operating on a completely different level. Yeah. And like, I mean, to the point that his motifs and stuff are all the best. His sequences are all the best. It's yeah. like they just, they know the ghoul is kind of the, the heart of it in a lot yeah. of ways. It's like, and I really like the, uh, the, the, the foil of yeah. of Lucy and the ghoul. Like I really love them together and, he, and how they uh are so completely different and yet so similar he, in a lot of he ways. He feels like, in like every way like he used to be her. You know yes, what I mean? He used to be yeah. this guy that had and look, maybe their ideals were different yeah. to an extent, but he you know, like that is a part that I really loved about it. Yeah. Um that yeah, he, he she feels like him at the beginning and he feels like her at the end. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're I mean and he is saying that. Like he's yeah, telling yeah. her as much. Oh dude, I love whenever she bites his finger off and he looks at it and he's like, No, that's the first honest exchange you and I have had. Yeah. It's like, oh that's so good. And then he cuts her fucking finger yeah, off. Yeah. I was just like, Holy shit, is she not gonna have a finger for the rest no, of the show? And then they, she just gets nope. a zombie one. And then she just gets a purple finger. Yeah, which and is then, they, then they're just gonna have to dip her finger in purple paint for the rest of the series. Fantastic. Good shit. Good yeah. shit, man. Um, I love what the show does with the titles. Like it's like such a small. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like every time the title comes up and it's like a different fun. You know, yeah. it's like a Geiger counter or it's like the you know a television screen. Yeah, or it's like good you know, stuff. Riddled with bullets. Like good shit. It's like a small thing. Uh, same thing with the post credits, where it's like we see like the animated like glowing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like that. It's like such a small thing, um, but man, they do it like it. It just like adds to the like the the heightened like fun of of the show and the universe um while also being really dark too yeah. it's like it's it's good shit um the chicken fucker dude i just love that guy oh i love him <laughs> i want i want it i'm yeah. so glad he kept coming back yeah he cuz he kept coming he back he kept coming back he was really good now uh, he um his his bit where he's like it's like i have potions that heal Feet, oh, <laughs> you know, like that gag is really good. It's so good. And then dude. he has a potion that heals a foot later. And then he has which a fucking is potion. hilarious. It's so good. Yeah, good I stuff. mean, like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. good shit. Um, I really, honestly, I love how video gamey it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah. it's like, 
it's it it works. You know what I mean? Like they set it up it, perfectly. It's like, side questy nature. The and side it's like, questy nature is a perfect. Like is a perfect example of what I'm talking and, about. And even like I mean, look, there's times where it feels like side quest, and there are times where it does feel like this is the next level. You know what yeah. I mean? Like now you're in a new area, and you have oh, to, it's like it has a yeah. great way of re- doing that without with while also maintaining the fact that it is a TV show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it never feels like it wanders too much, but it never yeah. feels like it's too narrow. Yeah. Really yeah. good world building. Yeah. It, it never. Yeah. It never feels like you are like fully too far off the yeah. path where it's like oh my god can we please just get back to the story like, it's like, like in it's a way all that relevant like i think and look i like the last of us i really do yeah it is like with more and more time the less and less i've liked it yeah i kind of um, feel that too yeah and i i felt that watching it yeah. the further into the show we got the less i liked it yeah um it felt like it like in many ways it felt like they were just kind of rushing to the end. Exactly. And that was what I was gonna say is that show has like no side quests other yeah. than like Joel getting hurt. Other than but episode three. Other in episode three is the, the best, best episode. Yeah. yeah. It, it, which is the the wildest part about that show is it, that feels like it's just beelining when the last of us is so much about which I know this is a part of the game mechanic you don't like, but like scavenging yeah. and like the character development of them just walking around. Like, yeah, that's the shit I miss from the show. Yeah. I, I miss the, like Ellie got kidnapped. We got to go find her. And then that's when the scene happens is yes. because of this feel, this thing that like, Oh my God. Oh, we got to, Oh crap. The, the mission's ten- that way, but we have to run this way to get her. Yeah. It's like, all of that is just gone. Like yeah. in a way that does not work for me. Yeah. There's like certain things. There are certain things that they add in that show that like legitimately, Add like so yes. much. Oh, absolutely. Um, like the conversation between Joel and um his brother, uh, uh oh, what? Tommy. 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 Yeah. Once once they like he reunites with him mm-hmm. and he has that conversation about how like he just can't do it. Really good. Phenomenal. Like yeah. so good. Their aging of Joel is good. Yeah. To an extent. Yeah. Like, no, I, I I think there are times they take it a little too far. Where it, like at a certain point you're kind of just like, I. Yeah, like, why are you still alive? You know what I mean? Where it's like, there's a few times where they take it a little too far, especially early on when they're like, they represent Joel as this like force of fucking nature. And then late in the show, he's like, not. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. In a way that I think is like, they took it a little too far. Yeah. Um, Which is all Craig Mazin and him bringing into it. And look, I think Craig Mazin did a lot of great for that show. I also think he did a a little bit of damage. Mm, Yeah, Um, I don't disagree with that. But anyway, that's The Last of Us. Uh, Us. Images of the new season came out. Uh, Pedro Pascal looks even more daddy with his haircut. Have you seen it? Yeah. I've seen just that one image. There's that image and then there's the reverse of Ellie. And I I really like them as, um, as Ellie. The problem is they look... The exact same age, yeah. and the time jump is very um, it's just several years. And if they take that out, that's such a big part of it yeah. that it will actively hurt the story a lot for yeah. me. Um, I doubt. I I I I imagine the time jump will still be there, and they'll dog, just be like, but, but give Ellie Ellie, give, Ellie just looks uh but, the same. But give Ellie a different haircut. I give, know. Give, give the character another scar because that- doesn't. Ellie have shorter hair yes. in the game. Yeah, like yes. they, they cut her. Hair well, in cu- the game. yeah, because in in the first one Ellie has a ponytail, and then the second one it's it's like the half ponytail, but the hair stops right. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it, it, actively an issue for me, which is like, and again, yeah. we all knew they all they cast Bella Ramsey young because they knew Bella Ramsey would grow up, and then they did they they but did Bella grow up, Ramsey but they looked the exact same. Looked exactly the same as they did when they were on Game of Thrones when they were eight. Precisely. Uh, and the, no shade on Bella Ramsey. I, no, think, yeah. I think they are fantastic, incredible. Cannot wait to see what they do with with Ellie in the second season. Yeah. But anyway, no, we just got on a tangent. Yeah, about, um, uh, 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 we got on a side quest. Uh, um. There we are. <laughs> That's how you bring it back, boys. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Every time it cuts to like slow mo of like a head getting blown off, I was like, "Oh, that's Vats." That's yeah. the like slow mo thing within the games. I was like, "Oh, they're doing Vats right that's there." Funny. It's like it's it, it's exactly like it is in the game and like in the best way. And then also like the fast travel in the show, like they move quick. Yeah, and yeah. that's like a very big part of the game is fast travel. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, you hop onto your pit boy and then oh, all of a sudden you're in fucking Nevada yeah, where you were yeah, just yeah. in California, um, which like. Is like a it works for me in the show and it just feels very video game in yeah. a way that I really really like. Um, man, the costumes yes. are so yes. good throughout the show. It's like the the like vault dweller uniforms mm-hmm. are so good. They feel so like tactile and real without being like cheesy. Yeah, they 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 straddle the line between the goofiness of a lot of this yeah. stuff 
and the like badass side of it without going too far where it's like edge lordy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they straddle that spectrum yeah. perfectly throughout the series. I mean, here, here's here's the thing that I think is like really fun about it too is like the they understand when the how and when to make the power armor look badass yes. and when it's going to look silly as shit because yeah. it is just kind of silly sometimes. Yeah. It's like, and they understand how to like thread that needle really well. Most of the time, not yeah. all of the time, not hundred percent of the time. It's like, but it is a silly thing. Like yeah. it is, it, it is inherently kind of goofy looking occasionally, but then there's like the first time we see the power armor where they're coming out of the yeah, helicopters. Yeah. It looks badass as the, shit. The first time you see it or when he's like, let her go. And yeah. he's like, Badass. Awesome. That that sequence works. And then as soon as she's like, stop, yeah. he's like, oh, somebody check on him. And it all of a sudden looks silly again. It's like really, really well crafted yeah. how they do all that. Yeah. Um, the, um, yeah, uh, we, we already talked about the kind of the side questy nature of it. Yeah. Um, the casting, like across the board. Great. Is Everybody's so, great. So, so good. Um, I, I, a couple people I know are in yeah. this show. Yeah. Um, in, a, in a crazy way. Uh, I, I, know, I know Darcy. Uh, did you recognize other people? Uh, I, I don't want to dox him on the podcast because I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but I went to college with him. He's a fantastic director. Well, I, and a great I dude. can't imagine they wouldn't want to get a credit for the thing that they were in. That's true. Uh, his name is Don. Yeah. Uh, he's amazing. He is, uh, he, I think he's in two shots. I need to go look at the first one, but yeah. he's definitely in one where they're, they radio and they're like, well, come pick you up. And he's like, no, he's that side of it. He's the guy on the comms with the scar oh. on his face and the beard. To him, Sick. he popped up and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> hey, I know that guy." Yeah, it was like um, I saw Darcy in it. Darcy's in it a bunch. See, I, did, I, I did not see Darcy once. Is the funny part? Really? Like, I just, I well, part of it I was having to Darcy watch. Darcy has like, like lines. I was watching it at work, and I'm sure if you uh, pointed it, I'd be like, "Oh, why did I yeah, miss yeah. that?" Shout out Darcy. Um, Darcy's I, great. I've you probably don't even remember me, Darcy, but I was on set for a thing you did once. I you were very, yeah. He follows my finsta, Hell <laughs> yeah. or my friend's stuff, whatever. It's yeah. Called. Um, he, I, I, I key gripped two things that he. He was in, and yeah. he's a fantastically nice human. Uh, uh, funny enough, he was in Dawn's short film. Oh, shit. <laughs> he's a fantastically lovely human being, yeah. and I want nothing but the best for him. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he was um, incredibly sweet. So, so yeah, and then uh, uh, Kelty. Kelty yeah. worked on uh, uh, production, production stuff. I don't know exactly. She's, uh, they filmed a bunch of that in Utah, yeah. um, and she did a bunch of the production stuff Utah side. Yeah, so. shout out Kelty. Hey, Kelty, how you doing? Hey. How's uh, Mr. Dr. Pilot? How's that yeah, one? exactly. Yeah. How's he doing? Um, uh, yeah, like Linus. Just yeah. Linus. Oh. The dog. The dog. The dog's so well cast. I mean uh, that like seriously. He's like Ky- Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. Kyle McLaughlin. I love that there's a resurgence for Kyle McLaughlin because he's awesome. Yeah. But I read a tweet where somebody was like, oh, uh, the, the guy from... David Lynch's Dune is in the new Fallout show. He's what, and then the response to that was, "I love when new people discover the concept of Kyle McLaughlin." <laughs> and th- I think that's right. I think describing him as the concept oh, of Kyle McLaughlin yeah. is perfect. He is okay. I thought he did. He did, I thought he, I thought he got canceled. Am I crazy? I do not know about that. And Breck is usually really on top. Okay, of it. all right. If that. Please prove me wrong. I want to be so wrong All right, here. I, while you're still doing some casting talk. I'm because, out. yeah, like, oh, God, but yeah, like to to sing Kyle McLaughlin's praises, um, he just like he just fully understands the assignment at all times. Like when he's giving the speech in the first episode, um, like after the, the you know, the wedding or whatever, the, the exchange of, uh, you know, the exchange, um, uh, he just like. Uh, he just perfectly understands the assignment, like the desperation in the last episode, um, you know, where he's like, where he's interrupting um, uh, Moldaver uh, and, and being like, listen to me. Uh, I loved your mother, but then she wasn't, she stopped being your mother when she left home and took you with her. Um, he just understands the assignment. Uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, Ella Purnell, obviously. I really do like the actor that plays Maximus. Um, and like, I want to see him in many other things. It was just like, and I, I don't blame him or his performance for literally anything about what I dislike about his character. I mean, it's all just like the slow roll of making him uh, enjoyable or like likable um, because he starts out in just such a rough place. But I think he has like this vulnerability the entire time that does make you want to root for him. And and that is to his credit. Um, and it's almost in, in spite of the way he is written at times. Sorry. I, th- I, 
This is very weird because a lot of names that are almost Kyle McLaughlin for people who have done really awful things. See, and I'm this, trying is, to, this is what you have to do. You have to look up Kyle McLaughlin's name and go to his Wikipedia and see if there's something under controversy. <laughs> if he has a... Uh, that's the... Uh, uh, oh, I, I... There's some people apparently saying he was mean or something. I don't know. But, okay. Because I thought, for some reason, I thought... He does not have a section under his Wikipedia called the controversy. Okay. That is good enough for me because I, for, I don't know why I thought during the me too thing, I thought he got me too. Um, I, I am clearly, I'm clearly wrong. If not, uh, yeah, check us, tell yeah, us. Check, uh, please. I, we are clearly not very researched on this topic. Um, if not, he's awesome. If rules. so, if so, uh, we can have that conversation. Yeah. Um, we will rescind all of this. Yeah. We, yeah. Well, uh, 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 did you see Liam Neeson defended Kevin Spacey? This year, <sighs> like that to me is enough to go. You know what, Liam? I think I'm out. I think, I think I'm, I'm done. Now. I think yeah. I'm done. This dude. Like, yeah, and then he had that weird thing where he was talking about where he was like kind of racist for a minute. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, no, he he is. Uh, look, he is an old fucker at yeah. this point. But at the same time, read the room. Yeah, read Be a moral room. human being. <laughs> anyway. It's like why. It's it's when they it's when they go to bat for yeah. assholes. Yeah. Like, why are you going to bat for that guy? It's like look, Nathan Nathan Fillion did it for Joss Whedon in a way that I'm I have very complicated feelings on. Yeah. But I don't know. It's like it's all strange. It's all weird. Anyway, moving on. Walton Goggins. Just a uh, moment of silence for Walton Goggins. He's so good. So dude. good. Perfectly cast. Like his he's like I used to wear one of those armors. Yeah. They had a def- uh, design flaw. It's like, yeah. shit, he's loading his gun and they're just letting him because they're like, oh, fuck, it's a ghoul. Yeah. Like, great shit. Yeah. So that good. entire sequence of like yeah. the. the, the do, 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 do. Yeah. Good shit, man. Good I'm shit. I'm super, super into everything with him. Like, his entrances, his like, rev- the introduction to him as a character. Oh, so good. Dude, I love that he's like, I'm in this for the love of the game. And yeah. then he just kills all of them. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you say it's your last mission, that tells me your heart's not in it. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, dude. Yeah. No, and I, I, I love that. Um, I love the, the, the whole, um, the, the design of him. But like, one of the weird details I love is the saddlebag. Yeah. I love that his carry yeah. is, is a saddlebag. Throws it over his yeah. shoulder. Oh, that, and I also do. Does he ever use the rifle on the back of his shoulder, or does he only ever use the the super sick different bullet pistol? Because I don't think he ever uses the rifle on the back of his shoulder. And it's so funny to me that he had to carry that around in basically every shot. It's so funny if he doesn't use it. I don't think he I uses it. I can't think it. of a scenario where he if, does. If there's one time it's in Philly briefly when he like, yeah. but I don't think he does. Like the one time I can think is when he whips off the gun to try to shoot the power armor. Yeah. Because he like is out of bullets on the, he has to reload the other one. And he can't. Yeah. The only time I can think that he uses yeah. it. And I'm not positive. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious, hilarious. Funny? Uh, yeah, funny? Um, but yeah, it's so good, so good. I mean, like all of the cast. The um, I don't. Moises is his first name. I can't remember his last name. Uh, the 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 actor that they get uh, they cast for her brother. Yes. Um, so good, He's so really perfectly good. cast. Uh, 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 Walton Goggins' wife, perfectly cast. Moldaver, like mm-hmm. all of them are so 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 good. Yeah. Did, did they ever say how she survived so long? No, did she that is a tank? wonderful question. Like it was like, did she ghoulify, but she was but able they, to take the medicine? But they to... DH her a little bit. They DH her in the, in the, the flashbacks. flashbacks yeah. So I'm thinking maybe she's well uh, because she's been out at least the time that um, the new city came along. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's so yeah, it's it's either like either she was. Um, Frozen, yeah. Or, but she, but but the funny thing is, she's not de-aged in the flashback flashbacks. She's only uh, de-aged in the Shady Sands flashbacks. Oh, interesting. No. So no I, answer for I you. think she might just be a uh, a dis like a granddaughter. That would be my assumption. But I don't know. That I think that I think that is supposed to be a a reveal or something. That, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, or it will be like referenced in in the next season. Yeah, maybe she clearly be. has that, like at least for the ghoul that she clearly has more story. With yeah, him. yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, 
I love how funny the show is. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so funny. It really <laughs> threads that needle of of the high intensity action, the drama it, and yeah. the humor. Like it really it really doesn't undercut itself with no. that. You know what I mean? Like Or if it ever does like I can't think of a scenario where it did, but if it ever does, it's like not over the top. You know yeah, I mean? like, like it's it's the the sequence is designed for it. It's not wouldn't it be funny? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah good stuff. I, I really like the humor of it. Yeah. It's so good. Um the props and the practical sets and like yeah. the fact that they actually shoot on location yeah. for so much of it. Like very rarely does it feel like they're on a studio or like on yeah. a, on a, on, in the volume or something like occasionally it's like, Oh, we can, yeah, yeah, yeah. but so often it's like, no, that is a practical set or they are on location. And I love that. Yes. It's I, like, why does that feel rare? I agree. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you watch the, you know, the star Wars shows and it's like so clearly that they're in the volume when it's like, you could just go to the desert. It's Which not is that like, far from it's California. It's why I appreciate like the uh, Robert Rodriguez episode. Yeah. Uh, where they actually do. And it's like, yeah. ju- it's all just a big shootout and it's like all on location. Yeah. Not that hard, fellas. No. You can do that. It's like, and look, and don't get me wrong. Like when you're in these like space age stuff, you know what I mean? Like when you're in ice a, planet, yes. you know what I mean? Like, okay, that makes sense. But it's like, if it's a desert, you can go to a desert. The, the, vo- the volume is the single most misused piece of technology. The only person who knows how to use it right is the person who, who's, who, who pioneered it. Yeah. Uh, Greg Fraser, you know, yeah. and he's used it in multiple different ways and vault. Like, you know what I mean? Like the Batman's volume is not the same no, as, not at all. um, completely different technology than the like star Wars volume. And both of them are seamless. How, yeah. when he's touching it, you yeah. know what I mean? And then when Kenobi does it, it's like, oh, well, it's bad. Well, when Thor does it, eh, no Thor, love and thunder was shot nearly entirely. In oh, volume. that does yeah. not surprise me. If, if Thor, love and thunder wasn't on some kind of like set with a green screen background, it yeah. was in the volume. Yeah. That doesn't surprise which me. Which is a huge ass bummer. Yeah. Anyway. But this show does but this it show on location, do it. Yeah. and they're so good. Yeah, I, I, I am incredibly surprised with how much I liked it. I was like, I heard people talking about it. I was like, you know what? Like, me and Megan had just finished Bridgerton season one and two, getting ready for season three. Um, and I was like, you know what? We're, we're, we'll do your show, and then we'll do my show. And I was like, we'll just start Fallout. I mean, it's like, this, it's a season. It'll be quick. Yeah. And we watched that shit quick. Yeah. I was like, this shit is so, we just kept wanting to dive right back in and it is so good it is it is uh, a very fun very interesting show that i yeah. i am pleasantly surprised to say i thoroughly enjoyed yeah yeah it's like it's flawed it's not perfect like yeah, it, i look i to be honest we'll see how much i like think about it in the interim time like yeah. this season didn't end and i'm sitting there like oh my god i have to have more but i want more ooh, you know I, what I mean? i'm a little bit like that I, which like, is like yeah but like yeah for me i'm just kind of like oh I'm, I'm excited for the next one more so than like a lot of seasons where i'm like oh my god i have to wait a year yeah. like the amount of like loose threads that I'm like really excited for. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good shit. And like in the intervening time I have like watched, I'm not going to play fallout one and two. I can't, I just, I, they're, they're huge games and they're point and click and I just have no interest. Um, or I have no interest in like playing them, but I've watched like very deep dive videos on like the story of fallout one and two. So like, I'm, and so I think I'm actually going to like start playing the games now. Like, yeah, Oh, I'm in. I'm in, dude. Um, good shit. Yeah, good shit. Yeah, I, uh, uh, lessons like. Oh, I I think for me lessons like I think the big thing that jumps out is how to do cross cutting. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that last episode specifically, it's like it's because I do the um, A Quiet Place Part Two has one of the most fantastic cross cutting sequences ever. Yeah, now, maybe not ever. That's a big statement, but like in a long time, and the ultimate flaw with it is some of them end up not paying off in the in in any meaningful way. You yeah. know what I mean? That like causes it to not quite work. This one's cross cutting at the end there with like him talking to the brain guy who I want in the entire show because everything he did made me laugh. Like I thought yeah. he was gonna shoot a dart, and then when he just starts wheeling forward, I was like, "This is such a fucking so perfect good. joke." That's it's so, so good. good. Um. Cross cutting between that and the reveals of everything, all of that really works. And yeah. like how the first episode it built into that, it built into quick cross cutting. The yeah. first episode was like big introduction to her, big introduction to him, big introduction to that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you felt it felt like we were with each character way longer in that. And then when we got to the end and we're revealing everything, it was like quicker. Yeah, really fascinated by that. I also just want to talk about light motifs and how they're not yeah. used enough anymore. Like, I agree. 
man, you go back and watch like movies from like the fifties through the seventies. Yeah. And light motif is such a powerful tool. Yeah. And like, look, they're still used. Star Wars uses them pretty effectively. Like the Mandalorian's theme is really good. Yeah. Um, Ludwig, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it, that's all really good. Darth Vader, the, you know, um, uh, Imperial March. Like, yeah, all, this stuff is still used. But every time the it, it, look, I'll, here's the perfect example: Wonder Woman versus the Ghoul. The Ghouls never got grading. The, yeah, every time because they used it not every single time he showed no. up. It was just when he was about to do something. Yes, you know what I mean. So whenever you heard or, it, you knew to ex, you knew to like sit on the edge of your seat. They didn't, or they didn't. Sh- uh, Fill it completely out. Like you didn't get the ah, 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 every yeah. single time until he was yeah. about to pop the fuck yes. off or he was in the middle of doing something right. awesome. And the same with the brotherhood. It's like the brotherhood's music feels different, but that, that mm, yeah. like that felt like earned, like yeah. that was on the badass shots, yes. not just shots of them doing stuff. Yes. Like I, I really like leitmotif. I, I music, the way music is like spread throughout things is, is really fascinating. And, and leitmotif specifically, I wish would have a bigger resurgence. Like yeah. movies still do them obviously, yeah. but like, man, remember when our heroes had theme songs? Yeah. Like I miss that shit, dude. Like uh, the Batman, Michael Giacchino. Yeah. Um, uh, he does that a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just rewatched the apes movies and his music for those is fan fucking tastic. But like the Batman, each character had a very distinctive musical theme and it was used throughout the movie for those characters at specific moments that matter. Layered in really interesting ways. Yes. Lord of the Rings would take pieces of the, take instruments out of the fellowship theme every time they would lose a member or they would be, you know what I mean? Shit like that is so important and it's kind of, I don't think it's talked about as much. Everyone's just like, that's a great score and it's like, no, 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 it's deeper than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not just sound, it's not beautiful, it's it's smart. Yeah. And I think between the like usage of needle drops to for emotional reasons, not just for fun reasons. Yeah. And the like leitmotif scoring and fallout is fantastic. And, and I definitely think I haven't really heard people talk about it much, Yeah, but it's awesome. It's great. I think, I think that's something they did really well on. Yeah. So yeah, cross cutting that. And then just like knowing when you got a character that works and just let them sing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I the fucking ghoul, just everything he does works. So you can clearly tell they really cared about that. And I think yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, respecting the source material without overdoing it. Like, I think there are so many ways where they could just make everything a reference to the game, yeah. everything a reference to characters that like the, the video game players would know. And they're there like, but they're so much more subtle than that. Yes. Like yes. it's stuff in the background. It's little offhand comments that don't like get in the way of anything. Like in, um, in the, uh, second or third episode there's a moment where she's it's when she's entering philly and you know there's like all these like traders and stuff and one of them's like yelling out like dog meat dog meat that's a character yeah there's a character named dog meat he's a dog um in the in, in the first game in fallout one there's a, a there's a dog named dog meat and he's like one of your biggest companions in the in the, in the game it's like it's subtle stuff like that and, and so it's like understanding the source material respecting it taking the good parts of it while also not feeling beholden to the fan base of it. Yeah. Where it's like they didn't change anything major about like the storyline or the world or anything, but they made it accessible enough for, you know, my boss to be interested in the show and he yeah. doesn't give a shit about video games. Um so I think that's probably my my ultimate lesson. Yeah. Fallout's good. Fallout's good. B segment. B segment. Okay. So we're going to be talking about video game properties. Okay. Um, it's kind of wild to me. So I did a little bit of research. It's wild to me how much better uh, video game shows are than video game movies. But we're going to be talking about video game movies right now. Um, you good? There's a big boom. I think it was maybe leaving that uh, room. Oh, okay. Out the door. Um, so I we're going to be talking about video game movies. I have 11 names okay. of video game movies. And what I would like you to do is see if you can put these in order of highest ranked on Letterboxd to lowest okay, ranked Letterboxd. on Letterboxd. Okay. Yes, on Letterboxd. Oh, fuck. So I have these 11 names for you. Okay. I, I would suggest maybe pulling up your um, uh, notebook or something like that that you can lay them out on. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, just so you can lay it out easier. Um, and then uh, I will tell you how correct you are. All right, sure. Um, okay. Well, he's and getting this set up for him. Too specific. The, the top one on here is Tomb Raider. Which Tomb Raider are we talking about? Uh, we Angelina are talking about the, 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 the new newer one. Newer one, okay. Um, so these are all kind of the 10 most popular on Letterboxd um, when it comes to like the amount, the number of watches it has on Letterboxd. Um, 
and it's not the 10 most 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 popular it's just the most like recognizable i think um if it's yeah, if you don't know, uh, uh, on the first movie, that's yeah. fun. The res that the Resident Evil one is the one from like two thousand two or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, are we talking most watched or most like highest rated? Highest rated. Okay. Um, I will read while while you are going through and, and doing this. I'll read out the the names that we have here today. Um, we have um, uh, hold on, let me put it in in Mortal Kombat. Which Mortal Kombat? Uh, the new one. Oh, the new one. Okay, the new one. Lower, then. Um, so we've got. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, Uncharted, Detective Pikachu, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Mortal Kombat, the new one, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Tomb Raider, uh, the, the new one, uh, Rampage, and Pokemon, the first movie. The Silent Hill's throwing me a lot because I know that movie has its defenders. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know that movie has its fan base. Uh we flip these ones here and maybe put that below that. I'm going to get this so unrelentingly incredibly wrong. Well, talk about your, your, your thought process. Well, you're like, it. okay. So uh, there's two things. I, I like the new mortal Kombat movie. I yeah. think it's pretty good. I don't love it or anything, but, um, all right. I'm just putting these. Okay. So I, I think this is my rub. This is on a quick pass on this. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. Bottom to top. Uh, sure. Okay, so should I just read them and then you tell me how wrong I am? Yeah. Okay. Or yeah, so, read them all the way out and yeah. then I'll tell you so what the, the la- tree is. Last place I have the movie Rampage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Mortal Kombat, Pokemon the first movie, eh, Tomb Raider, Uncharted, Sonic, Sonic 2, Detective Pikachu, Super Mario. You are pretty close. Okay. And, and I'm not... You have the very top one and the very bottom one correct. Yeah. So a wild guess what you think the top rated one. So, so uh uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie is the top rated, and Rampage is the bottom rated. Okay. What do you think that spread is? How low? What do you think the the okay, rate so rating think for Ram- Rampage? I think Rampage is going to be like a a one point nine. Wow. Uh huh. I've seen Rampage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've thought about Rampage exactly zero times since walking out of that yeah. theater. And then I think Super Mario is probably like a three point four. Very close. So the the way that it actually is is it uh, so at, at at the bottom it is Rampage. With 2.4. Okay. Mortal Kombat with 2.4 as I well. I had Mortal Kombat there and I brought it up. Damn it. Tomb Raider with 2.7. Yeah, fuck. Resident Evil with 2.9. Fuck. Sonic the Hedgehog with 2.9, which feels really low. Yeah, Sonic's fun, dude. Um, Detective Pikachu with 3.0. Okay. Silent Hill with 3.1. Knew that movie uh years. sonic the hedgehog 2 3.1 uncharted 3.3 which feels high um pokemon the first movie with 3.5 that does tied with uh the mario brothers movie. that does warm my heart a little because look i know that movie's not good but it was <laughs> uh n- apparently there aren't any actually good uh video game movies there is not a single one on letterboxd I, there's not a single popular video game movie that is rated over a 3.7 Every single one is below a 4.0. Is that not wild? But on the on the TV shows, e- even you, like like a Tron Legacy. Oh, I get. And maybe that's not popular enough to to qualify. I mean, I, that movie kind of didn't well, do. Well, Tron was came, the, Tron was a movie first, and then the video game came out. So there's a game oh, based sh- on the movie, oh, shit. not the other way around. Oh, there we go. So there you go. Um, the uh, uh, the, but the TV shows, it's wild how much better received those are. Yeah, the yeah, Witcher, yeah. Arcane, yeah. Fallout, the Arcane Last of also Us. starring Ella Purnell. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. Okay, I we've got part two of the game, okay. which is now rank them in order uh, with uh, the box office. So what, oh, from okay. the least to most, um, or most to least, however you want to do it, uh, um, in terms of box office. Well, I think that I think uh, I I know that one is up there. You know that one. And honestly, I good chance that one's going to be there. I don't think that's going to be the bottom, but I'm going to guess. I don't. It's kind of funny how clumped together these are. Um, I mean, talk through your thought process while you're doing this. So, look, Mario was just a rip-roaring smash yeah. fucking success. And then Pokemon, the first movie, is... St- uh, ooh, not still. It just got beat at the box office, I yeah. think, for anime in America. Yeah. Right? And so I think that one's going to be higher. Mortal Kombat did well enough for a sequel, so obviously it wasn't bad. I remember Detective Pikachu being like a success. 
I remember I remember Sonic doing okay, but it also got interrupted by the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and then I have no fucking gauge for Silent Hill, Resident Evil. Tomb Raider did not do well. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip those, and then I'm gonna flip these two real quick. Yeah, there's a couple of these I have literally no gauge for. Yeah. Like I just I have no idea what they could have possibly. Now, oh, fuck, Resident Evil spawned like a mega franchise. Yeah. Though. All right, maybe we will put. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Okay, here's my here's my just quickly. Starting again, Rampage also I yeah. think did the worst. Tomb Raider, Silent Hill, the new Mortal Kombat, Sonic, Resident Evil, Detective Pikachu, Sonic Two, Pokemon the first movie, Uncharted, Super Mario. Um, you're very wrong. Yeah, the it. only one I think you have right is Super Mario, oh, yeah. and it is orders of magnitude higher than the even. Oh yeah, two. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so the top box office rece- receipt is uh. Uh, Mario Brothers, and this is worldwide box office, not just yeah, yeah, not yeah. just domestic. Uh, worldwide, it got one point four yeah. billion dollars. A, a fucking insane amount of money for Super Mario. The next one is Detective Pikachu with four hundred and fifty million. Okay. Then Rampage with four hundred and twenty eight. Uncharted, and they with, didn't do a sequel. <laughs> I, I I imagine the first one was also was expensive to make in a way that it wasn't actually oh, actually that profitable that's true um and was, and i think that's like worldwide domestic i think it flopped hard oh, okay um uh uncharted with 407 that's um cool. sonic with 405 or sonic 2 excuse me with 405 sonic 1 with 320 okay tomb raider with 275 uh pokemon the first movie with 163 it is low on this list that is sad to know if it just got unseated um Resident Evil. Well, uh, U- U.S. opening weekend, I oh, should say, is, is where it like had its smash success. But it's yeah. I just thought the longevity of it now, would, whatever. Yeah. I, was I can't imagine it cost $163 million well, exactly, to make. Yeah. So profitability-wise, yeah. it's probably... Um, Resident Evil with 102, Silent Hill with 100, and Mortal Kombat in Dead Fucking Last with 84. It didn't even crack 100. Dude, and Mortal Kombat got a sequel that they're just finished filming. Yeah. Is that like a max thing like did, no, it get, did it get day and date on max i think it did i think it got day and date released on max it might have or a very very quick turnaround yeah. on max um so yeah it definitely was came out in that time of like when uh the suicide squad and stuff was getting all that that fucked them at the box office yeah. so hard anyway so yeah those are video ga- video game adaption movies which man there are no good ones there are just no good ones some of those on that list I they're like, good don't know, get me wrong I, but there, it's just like it's, there hasn't been a rip roar in success no. outside of Mario yeah and Mario's fine like Mario's, yeah. Mario's fun it's, yeah but that's it that's the extent yeah. of it man video games are better video yeah. dude where's our Halo movie yeah who knows uh, quick recommendations recommendations trying to think video game wise what i should recommend i mean halo i love halo yeah. deeply and passionately yeah um i miss playing halo infinite uh da, 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 da. do you have any off the top of your head i'm thinking not video game related but i do have a recommendation go send you yeah. uh bridgerton season three go watch the first uh first part uh good shit oh good hot stuff. shit man um Less recommendations and more just kind of uh, the new planet of the apes is really cool yeah uh i've been thinking about it quite a bit um, the, the, uh, I've been watching the X-Men series from the nineties to try to catch up mm. so I can watch 97, which I've heard is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, and I've, I've seen clips and it looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, I have non comic book friends re- recommending it to me. Yeah. Oh dude. I, I hope. And look, I said this before. I'm, I'm famously, uh, invincible TV show hater. Yeah. I hope invincible's embarrassed yeah. right now. Look, Invincible, the story, whatever, but like the animation gets in the way of that show being good. Yeah. So I hope they're embarrassed yeah. by X Men doing what it's doing with like that. Anyway, and fun to see the X Men getting their flowers again because it's been a while since yeah. they've had like just a success. Yeah. Um, other stuff that I've been really into uh, the works of Mike Flanagan. I just rewatched Midnight Mass. So, I just yeah. started Hill House. Uh, I've listened to like 15, 20 interviews of him talking about various things. I, he is a fascinating lovely dude yeah. i i really really love mike flanagan um let me look up that podcast really quick uh look up the 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 podcast script apart and listen to any interview he's done i think he's done two or three yeah they're just really good they're really insightful questions really long conversations so it feels like they really cover like quite a bit of you know how i got to this point and yeah 
because they talk a lot about the first draft versus the draft you watch. Yeah. And so like some of the differences in Midnight Mass are fascinating and how they got to the point. Really good stuff. So I've been listening to a lot of interviews lately. It's kind of been taking up my my consciousness. And then Midnight Mass because I've been writing like a fucking motherfucker best last shit ever. week. Um yeah, Mike Flanagan is like the best, best to do it. I really want to read uh, The Life of Chuck, which is his new movie. Mm. I want to read the novella really bad. Mm. Um, so I might get that from the library or something this week. Yeah. Anyway, that's, yeah, just Mike Flanagan. Listen to interviews of your favorite filmmakers. Yeah. Like, if you're really into Fallout, find anything Jonathan Nolan's done to talk about it. Yeah. Find long form ones that use so much knowledge and so yeah. much like good shit and ideas and inspiration from that kind of thing. Yeah. Really, I've really been into that lately. Yeah. But yeah. That's what I mean. And Fallout. Watch Fallout. Watch Fallout. Well, you got a lot to watch. A lot to watch. You've got multiple shows to watch. And, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of good Mike Flanagan shit. Uh, Listen to some interviews. um, Or uh, don't. I don't know. Live your life.